Good morning. Greetings, friends. And welcome to The Bright Side, your nutritional program dedicated to the understanding of the vast world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. I am your host, Pharmacist Ben, nutritional pharmacist from Boulder, Colorado. I specialize in using nutritional supplements where other healthcare practitioners use toxic pharmaceutical drugs and deadly medical procedures. If you suspect that there are natural nutritional roads to your vitality and health and well-being and to addressing your health challenges, whatever they may be, but you don't know where to begin, you have come to the right place. As you listen to The Bright Side every day, you are more and more in control of your body. You are more and more knowledgeable, and you know you can overcome any health issue. That's why we're here every day on The Bright Side to help clear up the sometimes confusing world of nutrition and nutritional supplements. Over the last 28 years of practicing pharmacy, I've seen drug-free recoveries from diabetes and hypertension and obesity and skin diseases like psoriasis, eczema, rosacea, acne, digestive ailments, autoimmune issues of all kinds. Recoveries that by the standards of modern medicine can only be called a miracle, but what is in the world of the body, what is in the world of biology, standard operating procedure, because the human biological system is a healing system, it's a regenerating system, it's a renewing system, it is designed divinely to heal and renew itself on a moment-to-moment basis, and while some folks may call that healing system a miracle, it really is no miracle at all, it is just the way the body works. If you have questions about the longevity products, the ones I take and the ones I recommend, you can call the Brightside Ben phone team at 866-735-2470. That's 866-735-2470. They're friendly, they're knowledgeable, they know all about the longevity products. And ask them about joining the Brightside Ben team for a one-time $10 fee. You can start yourself a longevity business. Get all the tax benefits associated with having your own business. Get your products at the wholesale price and help spread the word about the power and importance of a good nutritional supplement program. You can also head over to my website, brightsideben.com. We've got a shopping cart up with all the longevity products and a join the team link that you can click on. And also, I want to encourage you all to check out my blog, pharmacistben.com. Okay, thanks for joining us today. I'm very excited. I'm going to get to talk to one of my all-time favorite authors. I've been working, uh, reading this gal's uh, uh, work now for going on six or seven years. We've had numerous conversations on the phone and I've purchased uh, m- multiple webinars and just got all kinds of stuff on YouTube, all kinds of really, really interesting and I don't even want to say alternative. It's mega alternative information. And she's a mega alternative lady and she's a, a just a, a fun person to talk to and a wealth of interesting unusual information when it comes to how the body works and and health in general. Please welcome to the Bright Side, Sonia Barrett, author of Health, an Inside Job. Hi, Sonia. Good morning. Hello there. Greetings. How long have have you and I been talking to each other on the phone? Six or seven years? It's got to be. It's got to be. Well, yeah, it's been, been a while. I've been, At I've least been in, six years. I've been enjoying watching how everything your work has been evolving. And uh, when I first started, when I first started reading your book, the first book I, your first, uh, my first, uh, I first got introduced to your work with the holographic canvas, wonderful book. And I got so excited when I read that. And then I called you up, and then we started. I think you were on an old radio program of mine. And then I kind of watched how your work evolved until uh, sort of culminated with this latest book, Health and Inside Job, which is really about the health of the body and and the business of disease. And when I first got your emails on that, I was like, gosh, this is like right up our alley. This is what we talk about every day on the bright side. So why don't you tell our listeners a little bit about yourself, how you got involved. Tell us a little bit about the, our listeners, about the unusual aspects of your perspective and then how you got into uh, this whole idea of uh, of exploring health as a business and health really as an inch, health as it's a business and health as it's really an inside job. Um, well, let's see, how did I get into exploring all of this? Well, um, as I was saying to you before we got on air, um, I have been um, practicing just living, you know, naturally or alternatively uh, for many, many, many years. I raised my children that way, and I haven't, uh, I haven't been to a doctor since, uh, like, 1984 when I... 83 when I gave birth um, to my wow. son. No annual pelvics time. and annual mammograms and any of that stuff? I don't do any of that. Hmm. Um, my concept is that um, I, I, I believe that our body is extremely intelligent and that it speaks to us, and I think we just have to learn how to listen. It's an amazingly designed, um, and I'm going to use the word, 
technology, uh, mm -hmm. a, a, an incredible technology. And I think that um, we are definitely programmed to look outside of ourselves. So, and it's not that I haven't had little health issues that have come up, but what I've done is I, I have allowed myself to research, um, you know, what, what could I possibly do to change a situation? What could work for me? What is it my body is missing? What is it asking for? Um, those are the things that I've done over the years, and certainly it is, uh, it seems like it would be a lot of work. But I think as we educate ourselves um, and we begin to understand more, it becomes just a way of life. And, um, and so that's, that's how I really have gotten into all of this. What prompted me to do the film uh, was the, for me, it was the overdose of marketing of, of cancer, breast cancer. And some people may get a little offended or feel like you're trivializing, but it's not at all that. Um, it was just a recognition that, you know, the symbols were everywhere and everywhere you go, you know, it's either breast cancer month, you know, in October. Race for the with, Cure, Race for the yeah, Cure, sponsored by KFC, sponsored by Kentucky Fried Chicken, right? It, yeah, exactly, you know, and, and it is a run for the cure. And, and it becomes such a, such a fad in a way where some people, they do like going and doing the, the run for a cure. They, you know, you feel like you're participating in something. But I think everything gets so trendy. Even an illness can become trendy. And I think people don't, people are so conditioned um, to be sick. That was my conclusion. We're so uh, conditioned to believe that it is natural to always, you know, to get sick or to sort of have certain illnesses. So I felt like illness was really marketed to us more than anything else. Wow. And, um, and so um, I thought, you know, I want to put something together that's going to be different. It's not just going to be about speaking about big pharma, because we love to hear about all the things that are going wrong. We love to hear about, you know, either, you know, what's being done to us or, or you know, just we just love to hear that part of it. It's titillating. We, There's a prurient interest associated yeah. with it. Yeah. It's like riding a roller coaster, you know, going to Magic Mountain or something, <laughs> you know, and uh, because we're, we're, we are programmed to for fear. Politics so, is the same way, and then the whole yeah. New World Order thing, that's all kind of like an entertainment ride, an amusement it park. It is, it yeah. is. It's, Magic it's, Mountain, like you said, that's kind of cool. Absolutely, we like yeah. to be entertained, and we don't realize it, in, you know, in the manner in which we're being entertained, even when watching the news, it's entertaining. Um, even the way they announce, you know, something tragic, you know, they get... The music, how about the, mu with, the music yeah, in the, the music. background, it's, it always absolutely. cracks me up, right? <laughs> it, it's all a show. Right. You know, and the, the voice, you know, and we were the first <laughs> to bring you, you know, whatever tragedy it is. And it, and it is a, sh a show. And so I looked at all of that, and I looked at all the pink stuff and the pink Barbie and the pink toilet paper, <laughs> you know, and the, the NFL store with all the pink stuff. Yeah, right. And I thought, okay, I, you know, I'm, I'm over this. And so I decided to put this movie together, and I wanted it to be different. It is called The Business of Disease, but it's not just about big pharma. It, it's the, the whole process, how you're marketed, how it's marketed to you, how your brain works, mm. um, how you respond, w how your emotions impact your health, uh, which is something that is not really talked about by Western medicine. Now they're talking about stress a little bit just because I think they're forced to. Um, and so I looked at it and I thought, okay, uh, let's put together a book, a chapter written by pretty much everybody in the film, and, uh, and, and, and I realized, you know what, it is an health is really an, it's an inside job, meaning that the cure is truly in the body. And we have T-shirts, by oh, the way, awesome. that does say the cure is in the body, not yeah. in the business. Uh, but the cure is in the body. That's the inside job, meaning you got to work on the, from the inside out. Yeah. Yeah. It's emotionally, physically, all of that. And, 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 but on the outside, it's a business. Hang tight. We got to take a break, Sonia. I want to talk about this uh, this whole link between emotions and disease, and what exactly disease really is. You have an interesting take on on what disease is. I'm pharmacist Ben. We're talking to Sonia Barrett about her book, Health and Inside Job, or movie too, Health and Inside Job. We're gonna take a break and come back with more good health information and continue talking to Sonia Barrett right after this. Don't go away. Welcome back to The Bright Side. I am Pharmacist Ben. We're here Monday through Friday, 8 to 9 Pacific and 10 to 11 Central Time. 
and 24-7 on our archive page, brightsideben.com. We're talking to Sonia Barrett about her book and also her movie, uh, Health and Inside Job. And I apologize, Sonia. <clears throat> I completely forgot that the book is actually based on a movie. When is the movie coming out? What, what are we in? We're in July. We had hoped the end of the month um, it's done, but uh, it's a matter of lining up the where it's being screened, and that's what we're working on. So um, I'm going to say by the end of next month in terms of screening it in a theater near wherever you are, uh, that's what we're working on. And, and it will be in um, regular theaters kind of thing? People will yeah, see it? Yeah, yeah. Oh, nice, nice. Yeah, Very nice. so, um, so I, um, I let you know, but that's kind of what's holding it up right now. And it's just figuring, you know, getting, working on that, which we do have it in place. But the list of theaters will be on the uh, website. So hopefully in the next two or three weeks, the list of theaters and the different cities it, it will be there. I want to get into this whole idea of emotions, and then I want to talk a little bit about disease. But before we get into that, why don't you give the listeners your website so if they're interested, they can take a look at what you're doing or they can sign up to get email posts from me. I know you're always sending out cool emails with lots of good information. Your articles are wonderful. And for the oh. listeners, Sonia writes prolifically and, and very eloquently about all kinds of subjects, and, and there are many of these articles are free. Thank you so much for that, Sonia, by the way. What, what is your website? Uh, well, the, there are two sites. The, the site for the film is thebusinessofdisease.com. So if anybody wants to order the book or to keep track of the film or to watch a trailer, um, just go to thebusinessofdisease.com. And my main website, the mother of all sites, of all the websites I have, uh, been there for like 12 years, it's spiritinform.com. So it's spiritinform.com. Or you can always just Google my name. Sonia Barrett. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. So um, uh, emotions, it's a very fascinating subject. And, and uh, I like how you said, and we talk about this all the time on the program, the link between emotions and illness and emotions and disease or emotions and health for that matter. How would you define emotions? It's kind of a vague term. In your, uh, as you see it, how would you define that word? Well, I think, you know, I think one of the base things for just your average person to understand is what, that emotions are really electrochemical impulses. Um, that's really how we are experiencing and feeling. So meaning that when you, um, any kind of emotion, happy, happiness, joy, you know, whatever, fear, um, there is, your body is responding chemically. That's how that feeling is being processed, why we get to feel the experience through our entire body. If we're happy, we feel it through our entire body. If we're sad, we feel it through our entire body. If we are in fear, you feel a knot in your stomach or your heart beats fast. And the only reason why that can happen is because um, the, um, it's, it's the processing that happens chemically through the body. Uh, so thoughts, for example, uh, is said to levitate above the head. And it's, it's like it's like a, something we can't describe, but thought is, is obviously energy. It's not, it's not a form per se, but it becomes uh, sort of solidified when it moves through the ventricles in the brain, um, right through to the spinal fluid. It goes into the bloodstream. It goes throughout the body. That's these, are how thoughts, you're, thoughts, you're, these are thoughts you're talking about. Right, right. Thoughts, which then it get expressed as emotions because you have a thought uh, and what you you have an emotional response. Everything you do, there's a thought involved. Your emotions, there's a thought involved. So it's moving through um, through the, uh, the the spinal fluid and through the entire body, and that's how why and it bathes. It's bathing the cells. Because now remember now the spinal fluid it they ba it bathes the cells to begin with. So if your thoughts are being processed that way, and if you realize that your emotions are electrochemical impulses, then it would only make sense then that all of your cells and everything is mm. going to be impacted by your, your thoughts. That's the only way your body could react. And so if you are stressed, if you are in fear, if you are unhappy, whatever it is that we are experiencing, our body is going to respond. And sometimes it's challenged when it's going through a lot of, um, you know, uh, what should we say, challenging emotions. And then our diet 
is also challenging. So now you're asking the body to process the food that's already not, you know, not uh, in alignment with the body, and then it's trying to deal with the, your emotions. So, so you get the body that's doing overtime for both, and eventually a part of you, the weaker parts of our body, begin to break down. Because, the, the, you know, the body can only do so much in trying to compensate and keep the whole being alive. That's the responsibility of the body is to keep itself alive by whatever means necessary. So when it's over, you know, overdoing, overworked, you see um, the results of uh, illness, some sort of illness. You'll even catch a cold from being stressed. Mm. Uh, your immune system is, is, you know, impacted. So I think that on that basic level, I, I think that anybody can, you don't have to be a, a, a rocket scientist to hear what I'm saying, that it makes sense as to why your whole body uh, would respond in a diseased way, which is disease, as you know, is disease. Right. So there, it's, your body is looking for ease, mm. and, and, and so it has to give you symptoms to let you know that there's a problem. It signals you that there's a problem. But we don't, people don't understand that. Most people don't. And so they run to the doctor. Doctor gives you a medication. What the, the medication that's given to you is completely foreign to the body. Out of alignment in every way. <laughs> Excuse me. Yes, yes. And, and so your body, it's a chemical reaction because why? The body is a chemical factory. The body produces nothing but uh, chemicals, those hormones. It's, it's producing all of this all day long. And so you put another chemical in there that doesn't agree with it, which is a pharmaceutical drug, and it totally throws the body off. You think you feel better, but it's actually doing something else because it's, a, it's, it's having a, it's a chemistry experiment, uh, and it shows up in other ways. You can either get another illness because it breaks down another part of the body, uh, and then they give you more medicine to fix that other thing, and nothing gets fixed. It's all Band-Aids. So uh, it's interesting because you, the way I'm hearing you say this, uh, thoughts and emotions are really physical, correct? Yeah, that basically they are. Yeah, they, they, for, at first they start out as, you know, I guess some sort of energy substance, and then eventually, yes, then they meet, they work their way throughout your body, and it does become physical. So how can now it, you're, you're responding to it. So of course it makes sense that dis-ease, or ease for that matter, would, would automatically almost, automatically result from, from emotions and, and thoughts, correct? Absolutely. Automatically. Our belief systems, absolutely. Our belief systems um, play a, a huge role in it as well, because you're making choices and uh, uh, managing your life based on beliefs that you have. And, so do you, do you, you know, we'll take this when we come back from our break, uh, but I want to ask you, do, do you attribute nefarious or insidious motives to this kind of uh, manipulation of our beliefs and manipulation of our emotions and, and our mental nature? I want to uh, think about that when we, uh, over the break, and then we'll address that when we come back. I'm Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to The Bright Side. We're talking to Sonia Barrett about her book and her movie, Health and Inside Job. We're coming back at you with more good health information right after this. Welcome back to The Bright Side. I am Pharmacist Ben. You are listening to The Bright Side, and we're talking to Sonia Barrett about her book and movie, Health and Inside Job. Sonia, before we went to break, I wanted you to think about this question and, and uh, answer it. In terms of all of your work, you're always talking about the, the nature of the game or reality is the game. And In fact, you actually asked the question in, in your book, uh, uh, Journey of Possibilities, who controls the game? Do you attribute nefarious or insidious kinds of uh, uh, forces to this manipulation of emotions and mind and, and, uh, uh, and the ultimate, ultimate manifestation of disease, or is it just something that showed up on its own organically? Um, uh, you know what? I, I think that it, is, it does involve all of that. Um, I think that because we are so uh, gullible, and I think because there is such an old, old program in, um, I think, most of humanity um, to, I think, operate in this manner, that people don't realize when they are being manipulated. And, you know, and, and there is a level there of manipulation. It's, manipulation is so, it's sort of difficult to pin it down in a sense because 
you have people like Bruce Lipton and um, Dr. Ernest Rossi that go dig into it a little bit further, and um, I think Dr. Rapai as well, in a sense of how we're being manipulated in marketing. And, and what the conclusion is, is that they actually sell to your subconscious mind, not to the conscious mind. And the reason why they're able to do that is because it, it, they feel that deep down all they're doing is giving to us what we want. And the, the, the question is, what is it that, that we really want? And so because of the old programming for fear and all of that, in one way they are giving us what we want. But, but there's an original programming there, so, so you have to look at that, you know, belief systems, all of that. And so your subconscious mind is wanting, you know, these things to sort of um, take care of that fix that we have. We have a fix for excitement, for fear, for, you know, for all of those things, as I mentioned. But the conscious mind may go, well, I don't want that. Mm. But, deep, you know, but, but deep down, our lives are run from the subconscious level, and marketing companies know that. And so that's why they appeal to that part of us. Does that do you, make sense? Do you think disease gives our life a sort of meaning in a perverted way? I'm sorry, does disease Does do disease give our life meaning in a kind of perverted, oh, twisted way? Yeah, well, the film even kind of ref makes that reference as well uh, with Dr. Rapai, with the, the, the statement that he makes is our, talking about our identity, that we, we need an identity, you know, and, and you get to identify. I am um, a diabetic. Exactly. I am, yeah, yeah, I am a cancer survivor. I am, I am, right. I am, I am, yeah. That's what the film talks, you know, talks about, um, and he, he does mention that, and and especially in uh, America, because each place is a little bit different. But in America, as he mentioned, there's a strong identity thing here. You know, what are you identifying with? What can you? Who are you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Identity am, theft. How do you goes, like identity? I am a survivor. Identity a, theft. Do you ever hear absolutely. that? I love that oh, idea. Yeah, yeah. yeah we we're, we're seem to be obsessed with the idea of identification. Well, yeah, because you're nobody. If you're mm. not, if you can't identify with uh, something that makes you stand out, you we're very clicky. We're very Borg-like. We want to be part of. Everybody wants to belong to, you know. And so it's very easy for us to get um, directed in in that manner because we want to be a part of. We want to because then you get attention as well, and you feel like you're part of some elite. Club and real quickly, I want to mention this 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 ad I saw uh, a couple of times, and I thought, dear God, it was for COPD. I don't know if you've ever seen it. No, I and say dear God when I see these ads a lot, though. I know what you're talking was, about. That, that's with every ad, <laughs> but, but especially was, drug ads, especially drug company ads. Dear this God, is crazy. <laughs> yeah, because it, say for example, the person, the woman's name was Tara. She'll go, um, uh, my I my name is T I M T A R A. And I have C O P E, <laughs> and I was like, "Oh my goodness! Does anybody not notice what that what they're doing? They're finding another way for people to really solidify the identity wow. by spelling out their names." There's about four people in the commercial, and they link it to I, the disease. Yeah, oh, I am D A V I D. And that's, I have COP. Wow. Wow. That's yeah. powerful. That is powerful, that powerful stuff. Powerful. Oh, oh, my God. That's magic. High magic, actually. That's it why. I, that's why I wonder if, how could this not be in, intentional? How can this manipulation not be intentional? But well, your point's well taken. It is, it is intentional, I do believe, because if you have, I always say, if you have five people trying to control two million people, I mean, mm -hmm. I'm just guess saying the ratio in comparison, um, you have to find ways to keep the two million people subdued. Mm -hmm. You have to keep them distracted. You have to keep people from looking inside of themselves. You have to keep people from realizing how much power they actually have. You mm -hmm. have to keep people looking outside of themselves. And this is how the system is set up. People are constantly looking outside of themselves. Mm -hmm. That's why we don't trust ourselves, that we, uh, that we know what's good for us. That's why we love government, and that's why we fight over who's a Republican, who's a Democrat, <laughs> right. who's a you know, Green Party, right. who's this, who's that. It, 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 and it is just all completely distracting because you're hoping that government, you expect government and everybody else outside of you 
to be responsible for you and to have your best interest at heart. How, how much of this need for identification and, uh, and this idea of going outside ourselves that you talk about, how much of it is connected to our disconnection from our divine nature or our disconnection from God? Do you think that's oh, what it's very, really about? Very largely, because that's also soul to us. What God is is soul to us, um, mm. the concept, religion, um, for the most part, is an organized some uh, uh, idea or concept that is sold to people, with the, and they shouldn't question. And you need you have to operate operate by these certain standards and idea. So this this goes all the way through, and so people are very disconnected from that greater aspect of themselves because they rely on somebody else to tell them. Who, what, who God is, what God is, what God mm. is, and you need a third party because mm. you are not, um, you're not worthy of connecting directly to anything that could be uh, more expansive than you. You always have to have a third party um, that you go through, and hence, you know, the Pope, hence, um, right. you know, the minister, you know, hence everybody else, but not you, because you are not great enough to to make that connection on your own how ironic that even the the brilliant uh, insightful and divine words of of jesus christ uh, uh, look to look within look to the look to the kingdom within or greater works than this shall you and do also you even, that's even that sold to I us love that one that's but even that sold to us all of it but, but mm-hmm. sonia even that is sold to us mm-hmm. even that we have mm-hmm. to go through to get to that message we got to go to the church to get to oh, that yeah. message we got to go all to the it. the official all How ironic, it. right? All of it, because you, you, you just you you're just not smart enough. We're just not smart <laughs> right. enough to do, to do it anything. ourselves. To do it ourselves. All right. Uh, when we come back from our break, we'll talk about how all this relates to health and disease and uh, how all this connects to the medical model. I'm Pharmacist Ben. We're talking to Sonia Barrett. Health and Inside Job is the name of her book and her movie. She's got also uh, a couple other really wonderful books, The Holographic Canvas and A Journey of Possibilities, which is a collection of Sonia's essays. Her website is spiritinformed.com. We're coming back with more good health information with Sonia Barrett right after this. Don't go away. Welcome back to the Bright Side. Got one more segment with Sonia Barrett, author of Health and Inside Job, and um, as well as a producer, I suppose, of the film Health and Inside Job and uh, the book The Holographic Canvas as well. So, Sonia, we talked about emotions. We talked about the mental nature. Uh, we talked about the uh, the medical model. How is it that, in your opinion, we can or if we should interface at all with the medical model, with doctors, with drugs, with insurance companies, etc.? I think that. Everything has its place, and uh, I think there are certainly situations where um, they, you know, they play their role. But I think what ha- what's happened is it's gotten out of control, where people are using those systems as the most prominent way of taking care of themselves. We go to the doctor for a checkup every year, you know, and of course, I am never telling anybody not to go and get a checkup. I'm definitely not advocating that. But for me, my thing is, what am I looking for? What am I Mm. checking for? Am I expecting to find something? But see, for me, I expect to find nothing. So I'm not going to check for anything. Um, But that's that's just me. And, And part of why I'm able to do that is because I am responding to my body's call every time it shows me something. I am mm-hmm. responding. I'm taking care of it. Um, and I'm not waiting for the doctor to be the one to tell me about what my body is doing. My, the doctor does not know my body. He does not. No doctor knows your body like you do. And so um, I think that we have to recognize how, what the role is that, that those mediums play in our lives, how much we depend on it uh, in terms of our children and, you know, and our families. Insurance, I think that is the craziest thing, in my opinion. It is just the craziest thing. You have people who are very uh, healthy, they're fine, but everybody's so spazzed out about making sure that they have uh, health insurance. Mm-hmm. That is one of the biggest programs that's, that's you know, been been embedded in us because the idea of insurance is just in case. That's that's what insurance means. Just in case something happens. So 
So we so we live in this survival mode anyway, but we live in anticipation that something could happen at any moment. Yeah. Yeah. Not only that, but we are conditioned that by uh, we by the time we reach various ages that we are uh, going to get sick, which is something you know the film also mentions. It talks about it's like by a certain age, by the time you hit what fifty or is it forty? I don't even know anymore. Um, you know, so you're told between the age of, if you're between the age of 40 and, you know, 80, now you're sold a certain kind of insurance. You're sold life insurance. Everything that sets us up, sets our minds up, uh, sets the subconscious mind up, sets our belief structure up, our perception up. We are, it's a setup to automatically buy in, and I use the term buy in because we don't think of it like the stock market, but we buy wow. into things, into belief yeah. systems with our what? Yeah. Emotions, and emotions yeah. are what? It's our energy. So we are purchasing these concepts sold to us through our life force. That's ultimately what it is. Your life force is invested no differently than when you work for somebody. You are paid, uh, you're compensated for your life force, for your mm -hmm. output, for the energy that is used to make your hands move, to put those pieces together. It's the what, mechanical energy. It's the energy that you put out that we're actually paid for. If it's brain power, if you were um, hired because, you know, whatever your brain to design, it, it, a lot of that is coming from the brain work that you're using. But either way, it's your energy, just like a power plant. What, what the heck wants our energy? For your energy. What the heck wants our energy so much? Pardon me? What is it that wants our energy so badly? Well, the, the, well, for <laughs> the, well, to the resources, I mean, for various things. You know, fear is also um, puts out a great amount of energy, which is why you get so many, um, you know, you have all this, this feeding of, of fearful stuff with the news, and you get on Yahoo or Google, and there's always something in the headlines to, to scare you. Now, you get a mass amount of people vibrating on that same level. Um, that's, a, that's a lot of fear being put out, and, and that is a lot of energy. Now, I, I feel that, you know, it, it's possible that some of that energetic resources is being harnessed, just like they're trying to figure out how to heat buildings with, with human mm -hmm. body. Um, heat. So I think we're going to find out more, uh, see more of that. We're going to understand more about how our energy is really being used and that we are supplying the energy for everything, for, for our reality, for how we see reality. Our whole world is held together by the energy output no differently than the windmills that are being that, that are spinning for electricity or the power that you know when we plug our the cord into the outlet and the energy comes out of that we are power plants wow now uh I've got so much i want to talk about here we only have a couple more a couple more minutes where does food fit into this whole equation well you know again as i mentioned in the very beginning um, we that's that's such chaos and confusion too. I, I'm kind of so annoyed with that as well, because one when when we are being told um, you know about our health and about how important it is to eat well, then that gets used against people too. So now you have companies that are BSing and selling you products that they're saying are organic and are great, and and they're not. Everybody's jumping on the bandwagon. Walmart at one point wanted to be the biggest organic um, sellers, uh, you know, uh, and, and come on now. Walmart, <laughs> and they buy up all these other companies that were originally authentic and good companies selling great products. So our food is really measured based on the frequency of our food, meaning the, the level of um, frequency or vibration of the food, how much life force is in our food. And, uh, and so we need to understand when we're eating foods that are really dead and, for, and foods that are more alive. That's the difference. And if you have pesticides and stuff on your fruits and vegetables, contrary to what they're telling you, that there's no difference between organic and, um, and, and, and pesticide-ridden pesticide food, it makes sense. Come on. If somebody's spraying your food with a chemical and over here you have food that's not sprayed, what do you think, knowing that the body's a chemical factory? The body's got to process the chemical that comes off of the, the, the your fruits and vegetables to begin with, and, and then your body's impacted by that as well. 
So if and also if you are in a depressed state, sad state, uh, struggling, surviving, uh, all of those things, whatever the emo- the low grade emotional state is, again, your body has to try to process the dead food along with trying to keep you alive because you're feeling down and you feel how you feel when you're depressed and when you're sad how the body just doesn't it wants to go sit in a corner you almost just want to disappear so the body is trying to keep you alive despite the chemicals that are being produced in your brain to to continue the addiction to maybe your depression or your sadness or uh, whatever it is you're feeling. Uh, And that's that's how we get addicted to our emotions, to certain emotions. Um, So the food plays a role... Uh, in that sense, if we we could be in a happy, happy mood, we're, we're in the best mood, and you eat something that might not be so great, guess what? It mm. doesn't impact the body quite as drastically as when you are in the most down, um, you know, emotional state as possible. You, you're actually better off if you, you can eat a Twinkie, and, and it won't impact you as severely as it will if you are already depressed sad, feeling down about yourself, um, all of those things. Okay, we got about... It, it, it becomes acid. Let me, let me just say that. Those foods become acid in the body, and, uh, and that's the, the beginning stages of disease or uh, disease in the body is when the body becomes extremely acid. All right, we got about a minute and a half. Somebody out there with cancer, with an autoimmune disease, somebody who's struggling with some kind of sickness that just can't seem to shake, they're on drugs, or seeing doctors, give us a couple, give this person or these listeners who are in this kind of condition one or two or three action steps that they can take right away to start to turn things around. Oh, oh I think action step, first action step, my life. What am I feeling in my life right now? You know, what, when did this begin? What was I going through when this started? You know, go ahead and and face your 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 childhood, all the things that you bottled up. You know, is there a lot of skeletons in your closet? Get rid of the skeletons. Stop keeping hanging on to secrets. You don't have to go and tell everybody everything, but free yourself. A lot of times, that's what's happening. Your body wants you to free your mind and yourself. So I say that's the first thing. If you're in an unhappy relationship, get out of it because that will choke you. Sonia, uh, let Sonia, go. we're just flat out of time. Sonia, thank you so so much. That was awesome. I hope we'll have you back again. If that's okay, I'd love to have you on uh, on the bright side one more time uh, to kind of finish up and, and wrap up some loose ends that uh, didn't get wrapped up. Thank you so much, Sonia. Her book is uh, Health and Inside Job. The website is Spirit Informed. And that was Sonia Barrett. I'm Pharmacist Ben. Tomorrow we'll continue talking about arginine and the liver and detoxification. Thanks so much for listening, folks. Have yourselves a wonderful, awesome, beautiful day. We'll talk to you all later. Bye for now.